Good morning to you all. Uh, title of my presentation is today, Screening of Anti-Cancer Activity of Polyherbal Drug, which is used in traditional medicine practice in Sri Lanka. I think before I go into the scientific intervention that I have carried out, I'd like to give you a small brief introduction about cancer and why we need to screen novel drugs that is coming from natural products. Now, we all know if you talk about what is cancer, it is a large group of disease which is characterized by more than 200 different features. But most importantly, when you compare with the normal cell versus a cancer cell, the cancer cells have these unique features like uh, loss of control of growth and development. They do not self-destruct even they get old and even they damage because of this. They have the immortal behaviors because of the telomerase-like enzyme activity. As a result of, the end result is they will crowded, they will go extensively, and they invade the surrounding tissues. When they have power, they are not dying, they can, the arm is so hard to defeat, so they go and touch the other's territory and make the damage most of the time. It's well known there are a few types of cancers mainly, but mainly it is the cancer that is coming from blood system, that's leukemia. We have the lymphomas, which is in the lymphatic system, as well as there are other cancers. But <coughs> so these are a few types of cancer, which is well-known stuff, and each and every time, we have to be very careful because some of these cancers are resistant to various drugs. When you talk about the causes of cancer, the lifestyle is the most important thing. Nowadays, I think uh, I will show you in the upcoming slides what is the pro uh, pr uh, probability of cancer development nowadays. But the lifestyle habits of us make the high risk to develop a cancer. As an example, the bad dietary habits that we are having and the lifestyle habits like obesity and consuming bad foods. The environment also play a vital role in developing cancer. Example, when you if you are exposed to the environment pollutants like UV radiation and other chemicals, which is leaked out from the factories and other industrial environments, we are high chance of developing a cancer. Unfortunately, a certain fraction of our population, we have carrying a genes that is up, increase the rate of development of cancer. As an example, if there is any problem in the cell cycle, regulatory proteins, defect in the gene, we have a high chance of developing a cancer, so we call the familial cancers. This is a recent statistic that I obtained from the internet. Uh, it is the International Agency of Research on Cancer with the support of World Health Organization 2013. According to their report, these are some statistics. 14.1 million new cancer cases and 8.2 cancer death per year. And out of the entire population in world, 32.6 million people is now having cancer and they are undergoing treatment. The picture is not much different in Sri Lanka because we must look at the, our population. Because according to the Cancer in this Incident Data 2008, which is the most recent publication that is put out, cancer is a major cause, <coughs> source of disease. It's only second to cardiovascular diseases in Sri Lanka. And out of that, <coughs> Breast cancer is the most uh, abundant type of cancer, which is as followed by the oral cavity cancers. The most important thing is this, according to their output, one in every 10 person is a, have a high chance of risk of developing cancer. So in here, in this audience, I think we can imagine what is the risk that we are having, including myself, of developing a cancer. Now. Now that is about cancer, so we have to find a way of get rid of this particular problem. So we had for the treatment, we all know the surgical removal if it is solid tumor, a radiation targeted area to kill the cancer, and the chemotherapy which is give the diverse effects. But unfortunately all these mechanisms, even though whatever the science is developed into advanced drugs, the, there is a lot of side effects coming on by these drugs. As a result of that, the quality of life is drastically coming down of the individual who are having cancer. and. <coughs> Survival also a little bit less. Some cancers, they are very difficult to cure at all. There are some drug resistances. As a, as a result of that, the people, the scientists are more towards, going towards the less side defects based drugs. As a result of that, the natural products, they try to touch the natural products. Especially Sri Lanka-like country, a tropical country, we are fond of a lot of variety of the diversity of plant material. And from our ancient literature, ancient days, the folklore medical practitioners and the traditional medicine practitioners use various types of plants or the polyherbal drugs to treatment of cancer without giving or very less side effects. 
So our main objective is to find out whether these things are scientifically not, unfortunately these things are not scientifically proven that much. So <coughs> if you want to find out a drug whether it is not given side effects that much, it will be a very good novel drug in future. So our target is to check the particular set of drugs or drug that is used in traditional medicine practice and check whether it has a, actually have an anti-cancer uh, properties. <coughs> so the drug that we have choose here is a, known as Lepana gulia, which is a polyherbal drug made out of more than 45 different plant materials, right, which is used in traditional medicine practice. Now this, according to the clinician who's, uh, tr traditional medical practitioner who's uh, giving this drug to the cancer patient, uh, it is uh, used for 49 different cancers, which is in printing all our leaf inscriptions. So to achieve these objectives, the following methodologies were applied. First, we obtain the drug which is used according to the traditional way by the medical practitioner itself, and we make an aqueous extraction because aqueous extract is the one that is given to the patient by him. So this is the procedure that we have followed. We, <coughs> sorry, extract it and ultimately freeze dried and stored in minus 20 until we use for our studies. We recruit a uh, human rhabdomyosarcoma, which is known as RD cell line, a cancer cell line to check the cell viability and cytotoxic activity of this particular drug. Uh, so the cell viability is mainly determined by the light microscopy. We check the morphology changes, the shapes of the cell is changing, as well as we recruit the MTT bioassay to determine the cell viability. The cytotoxic is mainly determined by using the lactate dehydrogenase assay, enzyme assay. So these are, some, uh, these are my results. Uh, when you look at the light microscopy, we all know when we are in good mood, we like to stay together. We have a nice shape in our body. But when you are in stress, we like to be isolated, being alone. The same phenomenon is there in the cells as well. This is a normal cell, which is not treated with any drug or any concentration of the drug. You can see the spindle shape. They are closely attacked to each other and likewise. So these are untreated cells. When we treated with a drug, this is about 10 micro, this is exactly 10 micrograms of ml after 24 hours of incubation, you can see the change of the cell morphology is different now. They are not intact with each other, they are separating to each other, they are isolated, and the sh mainly it's dying. <coughs> the same picture we obtained when we treated with the standard drug, that is the cyclohexamide uh, as a positive control. <coughs> we obtained the same thing. Now we carried out this study for the time as well as a dose dependent manner, and these are the summary of our results. So we can easily see the it's clear indication untreated cells, they maintain their structure even after 48 hours of incubation with the drug. But the control cells are dying, but if you look at the treated cell, which is with the 10 microgram per ml of concentration, you can see the shape is different. As I, can, I hope you can see the internal part of the cell, this outer wall, this is a condensed material. Now that is an indication of the condenses of nuclear material, even though it is not present in this particular pr uh, abstract here, because it is the early symptoms that is indicating there is something known as a unique feature of apoptosis. So I even though it is not present here, I put a f photograph that I obtained. This is a DNA fragmentation which is unique for apoptosis. We call the DNA ladder pattern. If there any drug that induces apoptosis, we will able to get the DNA ladder pattern. So we have the ladder here, each and every, even the 2.5 microgram per ml concentration, the drug induce apoptosis, which is a very good point. Uh, <coughs> moving to my MTT assay, MTT is a, uh, <coughs> it's a tetrasolium blue dye, which is converting to form a sun crystal in the presence of mitochondria dehydrogenase. If any viable cells is there, the enzyme is in working, and they convert the substrate into form a sun crystal. So these are the form sun crystals, which is present, it is not soluble in aqueous media, but it is soluble in uh, DMSO. So <coughs> the color intensity depend, directly depends on the viable num number of viable cells. So we obtain the cell viability versus concentration plot in a time and dose dependent manner. So we found it, the 16.51 microgram per ml and 5.4 microgram per ml, the EC50 values for these two exposure times for this particular drug for the RD cells. So lactate dehydrogen leakage assay, which is a assay that we recruit to determine the cytotoxicity, when we plot it and we obtain the values EC50, 
it is about 26.62 microgram per ml. <coughs> so with all these results, we come to a conclusion that, because I have to mention this is a part of my PhD work, so a lot of work after we have carried out. The results demonstrate the high cytotoxicity about in, uh, for RD cells by when we are using this particular drug known as Lepana gulia. So this study and indication of our results, we, it leads to us to do some isolations, identification, as well as a characterization and find the molecular mechanisms of this particular drug, which is uh, act as a cytotoxic material. So I'd like to thank you all for your patience for listening. Thank you very much. Please now open for discussion.